Watching Harmony and Diversity, and we're speaking again with Kate Murray, and she's the head organiser of the Sunday Assembly in Melbourne. Last week, we spoke about the spiritual pathway which led her to the Sunday Assembly. This week, we'll look at what the Sunday Assembly is all about. Kate, the, where the siege grew for the Sunday Assembly, it tended to be a bit around atheism. Can you? re-illuminate that for us. So the Sunday Assembly itself as an organization? No, the, or, your experience my ex with atheism, yep. yes. Um, so when I first became an atheist, um, I went looking for atheist community mm. and I found that I didn't, it, there wasn't really a place for me there. I'm mm. sure there's a place for many, but um, for me, I found it was very anti-theist rather than atheist. Mm. For example, I was told that, you know, Christians were dumb because mm. they believed in the things they believed in. I was a Christian not that long ago. I hadn't gotten any smarter by just declaring myself an atheist and mm. gone up in IQ points. So I was pretty sure that that wasn't the path I wanted to go down. And a lot of atheism, they define themselves by their opposition to something. Mm. So I didn't want to do that. I wanted to find something that I was for, not just against. So um, I started looking out for um, conversations and dialogue within atheism that similarly spoke to that idea of, um, okay, you know, maybe we all don't believe in God or certain types of God. What do we actually believe in and how can we work on that and build on that? So people like Chris Stedman, Elaine de Botton, um, you know, a lot of interfaith type of stuff as well. Yes, mm. yes. And Sunday Assembly was one of those. Mm. Yeah. Interfaith, did you ever get involved with the interfaith movement at all? No, I, I yeah. heard about it after mm. I'd um, become an atheist and I didn't really think there was a place for atheism in interfaith at first, but Chris Stedman obviously mm. um, works in exactly in that field. He represents atheism in interfaith work. I guess the difference for me is that a lot of interfaith um, stuff comes from the idea that we all um, believe, um, we all have faith in some way and takes that for granted and then goes from there. Whereas mm. um, I think Sunday Assembly kind of does it different where it says, it doesn't necessarily say we none of us believe in anything or that you shouldn't believe in anything. It doesn't say anything like that, but it says um, we all know, we don't know what comes after, but we definitely know that we have this one life because we're living it now. So the evidence is already here. So let's try and live this one life the best way that we can. Mm. And that was appealing to me. Mm. Well, well that, that leads us into uh, the Charter Yes. Uh, for, for the uh, Sunday Assembly, which has three points. Mm -hmm. The first of those is live better. What does that mean? Um, yeah, well, live better is just uh, something that I think everybody wants to do. Um, I've never really met anyone that said absolutely everything is perfect. I hope nothing ever changes from today <laughs> until I die. Right. We all want something better. We want to better ourselves. We want to better the community around us. Um, we want to help each other. Um, so Sunday Assembly tries to find out what that means for you as an attendee and then help you to uh, fulfill whatever that might be. Mm -hmm. So how does it collect that information, put it together and turn it into action or hasn't it quite got there yet? It's a good question. Yeah, um, it's uh, Sunday Assembly altogether started in London in January last year. Okay. So it's only been together for a year. And in that mm. time, it's gone from one congregation in London to about 40 around the world. 
it's had a massive growth spurt that it's grown out of its clothes. It's got nothing to wear at this point. So um, I think things like that, you know, people are trying to formulate better structures for how we can best do that. Mm. But on the ground level, it's each um, assembly addresses it in its own way. So in Melbourne, we like to think of ourselves as a hub for people to get their own projects or their own whatever off the ground. So we have a lot of volunteers. We've got a lot of people with different skills. If someone comes along and says, you know, I want to um, do something in the community, I think it will better the community. We have the manpower and we can help them achieve that. On a personal level, it's just a matter of, um, you know, working within that social network, making friends, um, building community, and then utilizing that however you feel is right. Can you give an example uh, at this early stage of one Live Better project? We've had a few different things. Um, mm, one recently fine. that we had was something called Kindness Cards. Okay, so right. someone's idea was to, um, very similar to the Pay It Forward system. Mm -hmm. So we gave out Kindness Cards and then everybody had to, so Kindness Cards have something like gives a random stranger a compliment. Mm -hmm. or, um, you know, hug someone for at least 90 seconds or, you know, just little things that you could do to brighten someone's day or make the world slightly better for a minute or two. Everyone had those for a month and they had to go out and complete their homework, but then they had to pass it on. And it began this pass it on system of kindness where hopefully um, there's heaps of people out there giving each other compliments, smiling at strangers and you know, all of this. So that was the idea. Um, yes. And we helped put that into practice to see what would happen. And there was a, an enthusiastic response to that, to, to, to taking, uh, taking it up. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Well, I think projects like that, especially that's so simple, mm. A, for the individual engaging in it, you actually think about the ways that you may or may not affect others. You realize that smiling at a stranger or paying them a random person a compliment makes such a big difference and yet it costs you nothing. Yeah. I'm not a stranger, but I'm going to smile at you because we're out of time for the moment. We'll be back in a moment. You're watching Harmony and Diversity, and we're speaking with Kate Murray, and Kate's the head organiser of the Sunday Assembly in Melbourne. And we're talking about the charter of the Sun Sunday Assembly. We've covered the first of the three-point charter, and that is to live better. Mm -hmm. The second of those, as you well know, is help often. What does helping often look like? Well. Basically, when we help each other, well, altruism really, isn't it? When we help each other, it makes us feel better. It makes the person we help feel better. Ultimately, it's a win-win situation. So we encourage everyone to help often. Mm. Um, what that looks like within Sunday Assembly is things like, for example, this weekend, a whole group of people from Melbourne Sunday Assembly are going down to give blood together, and then they'll go out to lunch. Um, you know, a social outing as well as something meaningful. We've had um, people doing, you know, rubbish pickups, food bank, um, what else, uh, sales, you know, all this sort of stuff that raise money for charity, fun runs. Um, so helping often is about putting back into the community and trying to become not just a part of the Sunday Assembly community, but a part of the Melbourne community as a whole. Yes. Um, and you know, broaden that network and try and, yeah, help others in order to help ourselves mm -hmm. in a way. So this charter, well, we'll get back to helping often in a minute, but where was the charter drawn up and by whom? Yeah, so Sunday Assembly, when it started um, last year, was started by two comedians in mm -hmm. London. Um, not as a joke, obviously. <laughs> um, and... They were both, athe they're both athe atheists, still are. Um, although I should say that not everyone who runs Sunday Assembly is atheist. We have um, actually um, people of various beliefs that help run Sunday Assembly in Melbourne. Mm -hmm. um, 
so they were the ones who came up with um, all the foundations for it. I, it. That motto was already in place by the time I joined up. Yes. Uh, but I think that it's broad enough to, for me to agree with, like for everyone to be able to agree mm. with it. Live better, help often wonder more. They're things that fundamentally all of us want to do. Yes. Um, catchy too. Um, mm. One of them used to work in sales, so that doesn't hurt. Mm. Um, but yeah, basically they got together and they were trying to look for the positive aspects of godless living. Um, now that they, between themselves, both agreed that they didn't believe in God, how could they then turn that into something positive that could um, influence their lives? Okay. There's, there's a sort of a ring in here about your experience in St Kilda with the, with the Baptist church, the community, the whole feel of it. Mm. it that runs through it. It's quite strong. And as you said, the, the, the backgrounds of people in the Sunday Assembly is diverse. There's probably quite a few people with your sort of background. Have you discovered? Yeah, the, definitely. Well, um, yeah, there's a lot of um, different reasons why people come to Sunday Assembly, but there's certainly a, a fair percentage of people who come from religion mm. and have that um, nostalgia for the community of church. Yes. Um, and so then they come to Sunday Assembly, as I did when I first went to one. The first one I attended um, was run by Pippa Evans in Melbourne. And I went very sceptical because I heard the term atheist church and I thought, if they're going to preach atheism to me, I'm, I'm going to sit at a chair up the back, <laughs> you know, just in case. Yes. And I was absolutely delighted mm. that that didn't happen and that it was predominantly about community and about bettering yourself um, rather than saying this is right and this is wrong and this is the way you should live. There was none of that. And there was all of the good bits um, mm. that I remembered from Baptist church. Mm. Um, so, and I didn't realize I'd been missing that until I had that experience as well. And then I thought, yeah, I want to do this again. I love, I've missed that. I love that community. So really the way you, you, you're describing it, it you could be a, a devout a, a theist mm. and still be part of the Sunday Assembly if there's no sort of atheist onslaught of, of uh, anti-God and everything else. Yeah, as long as, um, I mean, yeah, that's right, because um, Sunday Assembly doesn't really have a common premise for its actions or for no. why we're motivated in life. Um, it's the only one is that we want to live the best life we can. So if you disagree with that, you're probably not going to enjoy it. But um, won't enjoy life much either. <laughs> yeah, very true. But um, yeah, we've had quite a few Christians come along, and um, some have been have said that Sunday Assembly will ultimately fail because without God, you know, there can be nothing, kind of thing. Um, which is fair enough. That's their opinion. But a lot of them have said, "Look, this has given me some really good life tips for how to be a better person," and mm. it hasn't said anything that I disagree with. So they go to church three weeks out of the month and then they come to Sunday assembly mm. one Sunday of the month. It sounds like a place too that you might have a lot of humanists gathering around as well. Are you familiar with any of them? Yeah, I, well, I think it's um, more of it. I think the term humanist church would probably suit it a lot more than atheist church, mm. to be honest. But mm. um, because that is what it's about, it's about um, helping others and about the human condition. And I think that's, for me, one of the big things about forming this group is outside of church or temple or synagogue or whatever you go to, where do we go to ask the questions about the human condition, about what it is to be an emotional um, being um, living through this life and how do we f face the challenges and how do we celebrate the rewards. And I think, you know, Sunday Assembly is trying to create a forum for those discussions um, outside of religion. Mm. Mm. And, and quite effectively doing so, uh, I'd, I'd suggest, because those three points, and we'll discover them, uh, discuss them a bit later, but uh, like helping often, as you said, has got that altruistic ring to it, which, which has its logical roots in, uh, in a lot of of the Christian faith, at least. Yeah. 
so they, they'd find a home. Yeah, and I've definitely, like, the f- we have stolen from the format of church, mm. and I know that some people have been upset by that. Personally, I see it as a compliment to church mm, yes. because um, the bits that I love about church, I love about Sunday Assembly, and we've used those bits because they are useful and they work and because mm. it's beneficial. Singing together being one of them. Definitely. But the time itself uh, is not singing at the moment. It's uh, out of its song. We'll be back in a moment. Welcome back. You're watching Harmony and Diversity. Now we're speaking with Kate Murray. She's the head organiser for the Sunday Assembly in Melbourne. And Kate, we were talking about the common ground between some of the assembly activities and church, which Mm -hmm. offends some people. But one of the common uh, grounds, I think, is singing, isn't it? Yeah. So we have uh, group singing. Mm -hmm. Uh, We have a live band Mm -hmm. and um, it's very Hillsong, maybe. Everyone stands up and, um, (laughs) you know, very animated. But our songs, of course, aren't hymns. Our Mm. songs are Queen or Van Morrison or um, the Beatles. So, yeah, so they're modern pop songs that everybody knows, but um, it's because it's not just about the lyrics, although we Mm. try to get songs with a good meaning, of course. Mm. Mm. It's also about the activity of getting up together and singing together and becoming uh, one unit of um, joyous celebration, basically, and having a bit of fun. Because I think sometimes we get a bit serious and it's good to stand up and be a bit ridiculous and have a boogie in the aisles and realize that life is about fun as well as seriousness. And the interesting thing about singing is that they, whether it's recent, but they've discovered that singing together, you live longer. It's really actually better for older people. It actually improves the quality of their life. Mm. Don't worry about how good their singing is. But the fact of them actually singing together they actually become uh, integrated and coordinated by getting the tone right, by, by matching their voice with others. And it, so it's got quite a health-giving component to yeah. it as well. Well, you've struck on something interesting there because one of the um, ways that we have selected what bits of church we use and what we don't is that we have taken only those that are, have some scientific evidence of being beneficial to people. Okay. So singing together is one. Um, A moment of reflection is another one um, because taking control of our minds and knowing how to slow and empty our minds, especially these days, something we don't do very often. We don't, even when we're walking to the train station or whatever, we'll have our iPhone, uh, iPod in and be listening to music. And then you switch to check your Facebook and you don't give a moment for quiet reflection Um, And it's hugely beneficial to mental health and stuff like that. So, yeah, we do try to um, select things that are have some empirical evidence to show that they actually will help you. Yes. And it's one way of getting people like contemplation and meditation are renowned for their health benefits. Mm. But a lot of people, if you present them with that option, will say, my head is not shaven. Whereas Mm. this they can use it without having that opposition. And the other thing is we do have stuff like that where people otherwise might say, oh no, meditation, that sounds, doesn't sound like my cup of tea, sounds like whatever. (laughs) But when they're in that hall and and everyone's doing it, oh yeah, all right. And Mm. they might afterwards say, wow, actually that was really good. I didn't realize that that was what I needed. So it's also about trying out new things that we might not otherwise try but when we get in this group where um, Mm. there is this broader boundaries of um, experience Mm. uh, we can try out new things and we might find things that work really well for us that we just wouldn't have approached otherwise fascinating it's like it's a broader church of of humanity real isn't it It, Mm. unfortunately the word church but it really is a church of, Mm. of humanity that's it's a marvelous uh, there's two two aspects which have got the scientific sort of basis. Uh, one is the meditation type activity, the singing activity. What are the others? Are there any others that um, you've come across? 
to this? We point? have things like uh, personal testimony mm -hmm. and readings. Um, so again, our readings are like the songs where um, we get people to get up and have readings, but usually it's poetry or their favorite lyrics or a Dr. Seuss book even we've had and things that they find inspiration in that they want to share with others. Right. But um, things like personal testimony, I must admit, very difficult. I did one recently, mm. um, but so um, cleansing in a yes. way. Yes. Um, and so uh, lightening. Yes. Um, I think that we are so sometimes so fearful of judgment mm. and we judge others and we're worried that we're going to get judged mm. and we bottle ourselves up. Mm. And it can be quite surprising when you stand up in front of people and you say, look, this is me. I've done bad things. I've done good things. I'm trying my best. Mm. It's surprising how many people actually don't judge you and turn around and go, good for you. Mm. You're doing great. And we all have troubles. And for those people in the crowd who are suffering their own troubles, they're sitting there going, oh, thank goodness someone feels the same. Yes, exactly. So, mm. yeah. Mm. Yes, that sharing is very powerful. Mm. Uh, so there are three, three key, key points. So. Uh, the last of your your charter is to wonder more. Mm. So in a way, that's part of a reflection of wondering more, of having a look and looking mm. at scientific outcomes, etc. What other sort of one, wondering do you encourage? So wonder more is the section of it where um, we have to remember that life we're lucky to be alive. We're lucky to have this one life that we have. For whatever reasons you think that we're here, it's a, an amazing and wonderful opportunity that we have to live in this world, to meet other people, to have education, to explore the universe inside and outside. And I think that Wonder More is about reminding ourselves about putting ourselves in the context of the world and the universe and just how intricate and beautiful everything is. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, in ways like reflection can do that, um, you know, but it's about celebration as well because Sunday Assembly is about community, but it's also about celebrating the fact that we're alive and the fact that we have all the opportunities that we do, especially in Australia. Mm -hmm. Yes, the, the parallel between that and, and the religious perspective of contemplation and opening to the face of God in the face of potential and mm. the face of beauty and all of that agape stuff, mm. that's hanging off the end of it as well and people need it. Well, it's interesting because, I mean, I think two people could be looking at a sunset and one will say it's beautiful because of God and the other will say it's beautiful because it's meaningless and it's random. But both of them agree that that sunset is beautiful and that's the yeah. common ground that we're trying to work with. And Kate, the common ground has been right through this program as time, yeah. we're out of that. But I'd really like to thank you a lot for going into your spiritual history in a, an open way and also into the Sunday Assembly, which sounds fascinating. Thank you pleasure. very much. Yeah, thank you. That's all for our program today. We'll be back next week. Bye for now. Baha'u'llah Allahu